So as on the screen, you can see that we are going to talk about online dispute resolution, revolutionizing the dispute resolution through technology. So I would like to ask uh, one question before I start. How many of you have disputes in your life? How many of you? With your siblings even? For a remote? Yes, ma'am, of course. <laughs> <laughs> many students, right? Many people who are in the room right now. So we do, we all do have disputes, but yes, if I say that these uh, disputes with siblings on remote or uh, some e-tables, these are actually being resolved by our parents at home. So we are not required to go for those formal, formal procedures or those methods or processes of mediation or litigation or anything else. But yes, we might have seen that, uh, you know, at our home itself, uh, our parents actually dispute. We don't have to go, to go for litigation, right? If my brother is not giving me the remote control, then what we are going to do, <laughs> right? We are fighting, but we are into fight, right? But what, how our friends are going to resolve that? Maybe through mediation, or maybe we can do it through negotiation itself, right? So we have seen that there are various methods of resolution of the school, right? Start. So if if we you know if we bifurcate these methods, we will see that there are three types wherein one when we resolve our dispute unilaterally, let's say we have forgiven the other party, that we do not want to stay into this conflict, right? So that is a unilateral method when I thought that my brother wants the remote, this is just an example, that X wants this thing, so let him take it. Or he has done this to me, let it go. Okay, so how I have resolved my dispute? Unilaterally. And then later on, there is another method when we are into dispute and we think that we should talk to each other, right? And we should come up to the solution and that is the another method that is bilateral method of resolving the dispute, right? And there is one more method which actually we follow, right? If there is a huge dispute, then we usually go for litigation or maybe these days this is ADR is being, you know, introduced. So uh, I must say that we go for ADR uh, solutions as well. So that is third kind of mode of dispute resolution. What do we call it? We call it third party assistance. Right? So unilateral, bilateral, and by third parties assistance. Right? So and we again bifurcate it, we again divide it into two parts. One is through adjudication, right? And another is by the assistance of the parties, third parties, right? So when we talk about adjudication, we see litigation at first place, and at another place, we do see what do we see? Arbitration. It is somehow uh, less formal than litigation, but yes, arbitration is also there. And then at the other hand, we see the part, third party's assistance, right? So third party's assistance is that of mediation, conciliation, or early neutral evaluation, or there are many other, like we are in India, we are having local Kadala system as well, right? So various conciliators try to resolve our disputes, right? So these are the modes how we resolve the disputes. So when we talk about online dispute resolution, we may be using any of these methods we have talked about, except that unilateral one, because we cannot, we cannot, you know, uh, resolve our dispute with ourselves. So that is another thing. So we usually use the online method piece man. And so what online dispute resolution is? It is just use of information and communication technology in resolving our disputes. The methods are all same. The processes are all same. Whatever we are using in mediation, conciliation, or arbitration, they will remain the same but we are going to use the technology to help us in resolving the dispute. Because I may be sitting in India, you may be sitting in uh, London or some other, at some other place, but we are parties to dispute and we can resolve our disputes sitting online, right? So that is more useful way or using technology will be the more useful way on uh, resolving our disputes. So now we are going to talk about uh, it formally because they wanted us to show the PPT as well. So they wanted to see our slides. <laughs> So uh, we have prepared one. So my co-panelist is also going to discuss uh, because we have prepared together. So you see, uh, you know, this is very important that what you are going to give after the completion of this particular uh, webinar, we must say, that you are going to understand the meaning of ODR, its definition and the key features. And you'll be understanding the current status of ODR, including its global adoption and trends. And you'll understand the importance of ODR in today's digital world, its benefits and how it can contribute to improving access to justice and resolving disputes efficiently. And you'll be understanding the challenges and limitations of ODR, including issues related to security, privacy, and fairness. We'll 
be learning about the best practices of implementing ODR, including how to design effective ODR systems, how to ensure user engagement, and how to handle disputes that cannot be resolved through ADR. You know, there are ODR and ADR as well. So there are many disputes which cannot be handled through ODR, uh, so they can be resolved through other methods as well. Can you please change the slide? Thank you so much. So this is, this is you know, we call it conflict curve or dispute curve or the way we understand how disputes get, uh, you know, aggravated and how they come down through the use of ODR or ADR, right? So if you see that, uh, you, you can see this curve that uh, here we can see that it is a stage when there is dormant stage, this is where there is no conflict, right? When the parties are thinking that it's okay, it is hidden, things are not coming out, but there is something we can say, uh, something has happened which has uh, raised a cold war between the parties. Right? But there is a possibility that it exceeds that stage and it comes to the exposure stage when both the parties are saying that yes, this is the problem. Right? They are going to uh, tell the issues exactly. Right? And then it aggravates, intensifies. It actually intensifies and there is a stage when it comes at deadlock because both the parties are not going to do anything. They are into a deadlock. There is an impasse or fight between both the parties. Now, what, what will happen if this deadlock will not be resolved, this, this may lead to conflict, right? This may lead to conflict, and that conflict may lead to violence or war as well, right? It is somehow between, uh, it is not between, usually between parties, but it usually, uh, you know, strain the relationships of the parties. Then if we apply the alternative dispute resolution system, right, these modes, any of the techniques we are using with the use of ODR, then what, how can we take it down? You can see the curve is coming down. So we can build up, we can, uh, with the help of a professional, we can build up in the further resolution, we can take the parties to one table and let them resolve their dispute. And definitely at some point of time, we will get a resolution. And finally, if the resolution will come out, the peace will automatically resume. So there will be peace building and reconciliation between the parties. This is how we understand the dispute. Right? So, uh, I request you to please change the slide. Can I change it? Okay. Uh, All right. This is, uh, I believe uh, Sonam Dutta is having certain question. Please do mention it in the chat box, please. Yeah. We'll, be taking, we'll be taking it later on. So, uh, yeah. So, I just wanted to tell you that, although I have already told you that how, how we get the disputes resolved, right? So, we have uh, taken up this four layer model for access to justice which was uh, you know generally provided to us by Niti IO which has provided us with certain policies on ODR right so you see this four layer model for access to justice we usually go to courts or ADR or ODR right so you see whenever we go to court we definitely get the resolution of dispute and in many countries which are underdeveloped or developing, we can see that judiciary is somehow providing us the dispute uh, resolution to the dispute, but there is a problem that we are just getting the dispute resolution, but you know there are a lot, a good number of cases, pendency of cases, which is delaying the process, but still we are getting the resolution, but one party is not satisfied, that is also clear. And with the help of ADR, we actually contain the dispute. You know, out of court settlement, with out of court settlement or mediation, etc. Then we can avoid the dispute with the help of ODR, right? We can give the legal guidance and assistance for those who are having grievancy, and this is going to promote the legal help. So you can see with this, with the help of this model, we can understand that how courts are helping us, how ADR methods are helping us, and how effective is ODR, right, in promoting legal help. Now, uh, Please change the slide. Yeah. So now I would like to uh, I would like to ask my co-panelists to tell us the meaning of ODR. <laughs> uh, I hope I am audible and visible. Yes, sir. Perfectly. Amazing. So ODR, as the name suggests, it's online dispute resolution. It's a way of alternative dispute resolution. Basically, in ODR, we shift all the ADR process to online. It's all the same. It's just your typical mediation. It's your typical arbitration. It's your typical negotiation. 
or to some point since it's odr and not oatr even your e codes can somehow fall in odr i hope my co panelists will agree because it's just online dispute resolution and as dr deman just mentioned that you know litigation is also a dispute resolution power so online dispute resolution is basically a way of resolving your disputes without getting to you know go out of your home just sit at home open your laptop ipad mobile and resolve your dispute so uh, one of the thing which matters sometimes in odr is the you know nature of dispute if the dispute is of very serious nature like as mentioned here particularly small and medium value cases for example we can't go for arbitration in let's say a dispute between two countries or a dispute worth billions of dollars because you know it's the case sensitivity which matters but if the cases are of small matter like you know a 100000 dollar matter or somewhat like disagreement over something such as in mediation or negotiation the cases can go to odr in the age of technology which we are living today data is considered as the new gold or new oil everything uh, since industrial revolution revolu- revolutionized our life this information technology all this digital world is on the you know edge of again providing a revolution to us and you know moving our lives online resolving our disputes online is a way to go uh in the further slides of this uh, presentation we will talk about the benefits and everything about why uh, it's more you know why it should be more up, uh, applicated for to resolve your disputes through online method rather than sitting or meeting with physical method uh, physically uh and yes uh, in pure for the size we will discuss about that uh, dr timan would you like to take, take this one yes yes you know this slide is something uh, which is talking about the origin of odr these are the, this, this is the total data we we have collected up to 2020 and we know that all the countries all the nations around the globe are working on providing facilities on odr and it started from 1996 and we are already aware that and the troll is also having uh, its technical notes with respect to uh, odr system so all the countries we can see through this slide we can provide this slide to kushi and she can definitely provide these uh, all these to this data to all the participants so you just can go through and understand that how uh, there was the origin of odr and uh, you know after the invention of world wide web uh, this act this actually become the practice around the globe but still there are uh, many drawbacks or uh, many things you know we are lacking into it so you can just read this and go through it uh, next slide please so the benefits of odr as i was talking in my last slide first of all there are so many reasons more than what mentioned here you know in favor of odr one of the best one which is also applicable in the traditional adr that is cost effective it's very cheap you know to go for adr rather than to litigate but to go for odr it's again much cheaper than our adr as in you know uh, when we opt for odr we don't have to travel anywhere to you know uh, go to someone's office or either travel outside of city or travel to all together another country for it there's um, in case of international mediation so arbitrations you need to get translators as well from their embassies to get them certified well uh, you do need those services on odr platform as well but you won't have to pay to them to travel you don't have to pay for allowances uh, for arbitrators or mediators 
you don't have to pay for travel of you know your expert witness or <clears throat> you know someone testifying on your behalf you know you can just send them a zoom link or google meet link that you know join here i mean they they will charge you somewhat but not to travel cost so it's little bit more cost effective than area coming to next point it's convenient and quick as i mentioned you don't need to pay uh, you you know they don't need to travel <clears throat> you just send them a link they will join and that's that it's convenient as in again it falls on travel part after covid we started loving living at our homes or just at offices <clears throat> if we have a office where we go daily we don't want to leave that office and go to some place else for an hour or two hour of conferences as in the conference of arbitration and mediation people just rather sit at their own office open up the laptops ipads and be done with it further it provides for a customizable process as parties can schedule their session as per their availability they can schedule their sessions for evenings weekends if other parties agree of course so it's a more uh, you know uh, customizable process parties can choose for themselves parties can mold it as per their like <coughs> they can take that at their homes there are no delays as such that you know i'm stuck in traffic i cannot make it there is nothing like that in odia further it encourages dispute resolution because again come into the second point it's very convenient it's very very convenient you just have to put up your phone just open your laptop that's the first step you need to take so <clears throat> like in delhi uh, i'm sure the audience is from maldives but in delhi we have a statement house it's for arbitrations mediation if you have a dispute you have to go there but in, in order to go there there is so much traffic there is that how to travel you need to get an appointment from them it's a lengthy procedure if you have a dispute if you want to resolve it on odia platform Just reach out to any institution who deals with that. You deal all of it online at the comfort of your home. Further, the last point, it's it limits implicit bias caused by human difference. Now I do agree that you know in traditional ADR as well or even in litigation as well, the judges, or arbitrators, or mediators, they are all are you know not biased. they are unbiased they are neutral then uh, what do you say they won't take any slight um, they won't take any you know unfair sides of any other party but some biasness can be psychological as well like i'm not i'm not saying this for certainty like i'm sure some arbitrators or mediators must be above it but sometimes let's us for the sake of example if a party comes you know if there are two parties arbitrators come and one party is for example you know not physically attractive or not properly dressed or maybe you know there is some other thing which they they can notice only physically that might you know lead a bad impression on the arbitrator or mediator now that sort of thing is 100% absent from on our odia platform as they don't get to meet them personally i do agree and i do understand that you know physical interactions are best you know we get to meet people and see their body language but sometimes it's for the better that we don't get to meet them i hope um, that some of you might agree with us Ma'am, would you like to take this on? Of course. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, definitely. We are going to talk about the global level or international level. So, uh, 
you know, uh, the global experience in ODR actually has taken up to uh, three main things which we have seen, you know, um, as I have told you that we have gone through certain data and we found out that various, uh, you know, different, in fact, if we, if we talk about China, it is not at all introducing uh, a ODR. But yes, there are many countries which, are, which have taken good steps in promoting online dispute resolution. So uh, we had actually found out uh, these three things which was common. That we have seen that there were certain government-run ODR platforms, and government-run in itself is clear that the government of that country is providing uh, the country's uh, ODR platforms. And uh, when court annex ODR platform, wherein the courts are, uh, uh, you know, providing certain platforms, and then there are private ODR part platforms as well. In some countries, we have seen that only private ODR platforms are running. So these three things we have noted. Uh, if you can please change the slides, we can just talk about these three. Uh, whatever we have noted uh, by you know going through the data we have seen. So you see this category includes the ODR platforms that are established by government departments to ensure efficient dispute resolution in the sectors regulated by them. And these platforms have been successful in providing fast and cost-effective dispute resolution, especially for consumer and labor disputes. And I would like to tell you one more thing about uh, you know this is what uh, I have mentioned in the slide, but uh, that something that has not been mentioned, you know, whenever, uh, this is the mentality of people that whenever government has introduced certain platforms, people have more trust on that platforms, right? And, you know, apart from going to uh, this, uh, although I'm not saying that they are not having trust on court and X platforms, but yes, they are less uh, in number to have trust in uh, these private uh, platforms. So yes, as compared to private platforms, people have more trust on government-run ODI platforms. Let us switch to the slide, next slide. Yeah, again, uh, code next ODI platforms that the name itself suggests that uh, usually uh, what judiciary does, you know, uh, there are many nations wherein judiciary give or give a direction to the parties to go for uh, dispute resolution uh, rather than litigation. Like for example, in India, uh, section 89 of code of Civil procedure gives the uh, gives the court power under section 89 gives the court the power to send the parties for any of the dispute resolution methods. That means they want they are actually providing or referring those parties to go and resolve their dispute through either mediation, arbitration, conciliation, or any, or any other mode as they like. Or you know they actually pro prepare certain uh, rules for them or. Uh, if they find out that within that dispute, how many things can be resolved through mediation, arbitration, or so. So uh, that means court is also providing certain platforms for dispute resolution, and online platforms are being used. You see, ODR holds potential to supplement the efforts of the judiciary and reduce the case burden on the courts. So this can be achieved by integrating technology in court and its ADR initiative and building ODR capacity. So building ODR capacity in code and X centers create a symbolic partnership between ODR and judiciary. So where ODR receives legitimacy because of partnership with judiciary, that's what I have said that that, that becomes legitimate when uh, an authority, you know, uh, authority to whom we trust, when it comes into picture, providing us with the ODR platform. <coughs> so definitely it works. So uh, next, uh, the private uh, platforms will be discussed by Bharat. Thank you so much, ma'am. So uh, as Dr. Dilman just mentioned that, you know, people have more trust in government uh, ODR platforms rather than private ADR platforms. Uh, I must say I'm a huge advocate of privatization. <coughs> there are numerous instances, you know, when people don't much trust government services, like, you know, there's uh, inefficiencies or somewhat like that. I'm sure uh, many of you must have thought about the same. I'm so very sorry, ma'am. Uh, further, the private order. I don't trust the court and extend government run. <laughs> I personally believe that people will have more trust in court and extend rather than state run. <laughs> All right, but, but, uh, but again, the, point again, is, uh, the point here is that uh, private ones have certain limitations. And then there is a possibility of limitations in court and as well. There is no, uh, no doubt in this. So I agree But that again, that's, uh, that was just my opinion. Uh, it isn't supposed to be right or wrong. It's just an opinion. So let's come to the topic at hand. Private ODR platform. 
so as i mentioned i'm a huge advocate of privatization uh, so everything is basically going private if you mention that adr is nothing but the private for forum for our disputes resolution it's just a privatized courts uh, adr is nothing more than that it's just you know uh, state can't handle everything that's why it's open up to private uh, you know private economy uh, private odr platforms <coughs> you know they provide for uh, better efficiency they are much more result oriented as they get paid by the session further if the dispute get resolved they they get paid it's a huge you know if you want to earn more you have to work more you have want to earn more uh, earn more you have to work smartly so private um uh, odia platforms work on that principle on delivering their clients their best further there are many odia uh, you know odia platforms can be on anything you can use it on zoom google meet on anything as uh, mentioned the ppt the you know it's a private domain as well as it uh, provides for a platform established by private enterprises as i mentioned sir uh, even as we know icc uh, international chamber of commerce arbitration bank there is uh, singapore international arbitration center there is dubai international arbitration center they all provide for odr platforms if you go and sign up with them if you provide for uh, you know that there is a dispute we want to get resolved through odr platforms they will handle everything you don't need to meet uh, you don't need to you know travel some some place you just go to their site you just reach out to them they will reach out to you they will give out a link to you you just join that it's very easy for the trends in odr let's take the last question first why is it important for us assuming you must all must be law students and again on an assumption that you are hoping to make a career in adr or odr it's a you it's a you know career changing thing to follow trends suppose you go to a conference you know to meet your peers or you meet with some lawyer who's in court adr or you meet with some legal dignitary who's in the field you know you won't have anything to talk about if you don't know the current online trends you know what's going on hence it's very uh, necessary to follow the trends it's necessary to make a career in adr you must know the trends so first is structure structure is basically as i mentioned in the last slide is the online platforms zoom google meet uh, microsoft teams anything can be a platform you just need a conference your uh, facetime can be a platform for odr your whatsapp call can be a platform for odr the scope is unlimited further what you need in your structure odr uh, if the case is of international multi language arbitration and mediation suppose one part is from india one part other part is from spain so the party won't know english indians won't know spanish hopefully maybe i don't know so there should be a translation software as well there are many private entities even zoom now provides for uh, translation services but again when the order is passed by either uh, by arbitrator you need to get that order uh, translated in english by the embassy of spain certified copy of that so the huge role would be of the translator in your international arbitrations or mediations furthermore what you need in structure of odr is the availability of it support suppose one part is well i don't want to be ages but we know that you know uh the people 
people who are let's say 60 or 70 plus they are not very well versed with technology so if one of the party is you know quite senior they won't be able to be that much um, what do we say immersive in technology so there should be a strong IT support on the side of both the parties as well as the arbitrators or mediators so generally what the mediators or arbitrators do before the commencement of their sessions or conferences they mention their phone numbers or they make a backup plea that if in any case the parties feel any problem or get disconnected you can either call them directly or just you know join the other way furthermore in the rule of private sector in odia i guess we just talked about this in the last slide but more on that the private sector need to raise awareness in the country like maldives or even in india there is a lack of awareness in people knowing about well people don't know about adr so what can they expect of odr as of now this will again come up in the challenges which we'll discuss later so what the private sector need to do is raise awareness further what the private sector can do is show their faith in the system and how will they show their faith in the system by investing in it you know open up sectors open up invest in apps or you know uh, start their businesses dealing with odr and you know the more private investment will come in odia the more it will flourish the government can do the government can keep on investing as much as they want the government can make policy frameworks the government can do anything but until the private sector invest in it the scope of odia will be well to say slim let's talk about good practices so well uh, it's somehow similar to that of the traditional idea that the media should be unbiased neutral should you know take both parties equally but in odia some other challenges may come that you know a party shouldn't just hang up or close the laptop whenever they feel you know that they are not being heard if i am in uh, let's say mediation with someone with other party and if i feel like you know it's not going anywhere rather than you know talking about it rather than reaching out to mediator that i'm not feeling heard the party should and just close the laptop and be done with it so uh, even it's the role of mediators and arbitrators that they Uh, you know, focus their needs, focus on parties' needs, and provide you know alternatives, uh, such as as I mentioned that <coughs> that if you don't feel like you're being heard, reach out to me or just leave me a message. If you don't want to share it in front of other party, just you know come for talks in the breakout room. There are many options, so it's up to the mediators and arbitrators. to follow good practices in odia uh, before you uh, i'm so sorry before you go to the challenges uh, i would also like to add i'm so sorry that i have stopped no, you here yes. uh, you know we we have not mentioned the uh, you know classification how uh, within the odia framework we haven't talked about it in the ppt but yes it was in my mind that these things are also required to be discussed because uh, you know although all, almost all the odia processes uh, tend to be ones that allow for written submissions only you know but there is a broad spectrum of odia services that range from online arbitration to fully automated on online blind binding uh, negotiation services and the asker said that there are chat based mediation programs as well so the selection of appropriate odia format may depend upon the nature of the dispute as well so uh, i just want to discuss those three main types of classification that has been done throughout the world and uh, i would i would say that that is b2b b2c and c2c so whenever i say b2b that means i'm talking about the classification of those disputes which are between the businesses and businesses so it may be business to business so b2b disputes are actually revolving around two commercial parties 
you know that are seeking to resolve a dispute over a specific transaction maybe or the parties in b2b tend to be sophisticated users and these are you know there is generally less concern over vulnerable parties vulnerability and a greater emphasis is placed on convenience and expertise of the process so with many b2b disputes are uh, resolved with some of the form of odr use of arbitration which is prevalent and if i talk about business to consumer one you know we call it b2c so business to consumer disputes are uh, you know becoming more common particular with expansion of e-commerce you know that we are we are all part of that e-commerce thing so we are we are consumers somehow we are we are using certain app where somewhere we are online app obviously we are asking for certain you know dresses or some, buying something so there's a dispute between uh, from business to con- consumer itself so we to see dispute tend to be lost low cost but high volume so and may involve uh, unequal bargaining power between the consumers and the businesses and in odr process may meet consumer needs to uh, you know for redress again against businesses and to provide the necessary support for due process rights and then finally uh, there are one more uh, you know this addition i have seen the global trends we have uh, i have already told you that we have gone through certain data uh, which could be brought out certain common themes throughout the globe that are going on so a consumer to consumer is one more dispute that involves transaction between two consumer that is for example the sale of a used item or so so these type of e-commerce transactions are also becoming more common with websites like ebay or gradualist uh, acting as facilitator between two parties so although the website is not an actually party to the dispute so they are just helping the parties to resolve their dispute so uh, i just wanted to discuss these uh, main common trends which are going uh, so that is So, let's talk about challenges which you face in Odia. Well, uh, as we talk about structural challenges, there's digital infrastructure. I'm pretty sure everyone must know about that. There's the lack of connectivity in some areas. You know, people can't get signals in rural areas or even if they can, the data is somewhere very expensive. In you know the on, uh, online dispute resolution platforms, either Zoom or Google Meet or FaceTime or whatever the mediation specific they choose, it can take you know uh, if we compare it to normal area, let's say beats, and even if we compare the beats. Let's just say in twenty to thirty hours, spread over the spread over weeks. That's again a lot of data, and some developing countries don't have that sort of infrastructure, which can you know that they can afford that sort of data spending, or you know there's well in India we use five G, but there are some still some places where 3G is not that much accessible, so there is a very uh, serious lack of digital infrastructure. Due to the lack of digital infrastructure, we come to digital literacy. That people don't know how to, uh, you know, operate a digital platform. Like even if today I give my laptop to my grandfather's just to open Google, they won't be able to do so. And you know the matter of Zoom and Google Meet is, you know, we can't even think about it. So that it that is about digital literacy. People, our our generation or the generation above us, might be digitally literate, but not many people. So what we do need, uh, so what we do need is to make more and more people digitally aware, digitally literate, and for that. We need digital infrastructure, so it's sort of a loophole, if I may. Further, there is a divide in access to technology. As I mentioned, that data is expensive; not everyone can afford it. That makes a digital divide between rich and poor. So we need to curb that in order to encourage ODR platforms or. Online dispute resolutions. We have to work towards 
these challenges well there are more challenges in the website then we come on to behavioral challenges that is again lack of awareness regarding odr people don't know about odr people don't know about edr but still it's far better it's in far better shape than odr what we need to do is make people aware aware of odr and make them trust odr which comes to a second point lack of trust in odr services because uh, it doesn't feel legit to be very honest or authoritative let's say i have a fight with a friend i put out you know i call him uh, let me give a better example If I owe my friend a thousand dollars, you know that cost that led to a dispute. Now I call him and I ask him that you know I can't pay you thousand dollars. Let's just negotiate and we settle at eight hundred dollars. Can we call that Odia? Please, I need some response from him. Anyone? Yes, sir. See, see, so ODR can be as informal as calling your friend and just you know settling settling it out. But now, can we trust that sort of informality to you know adjudicate or to mediate high-level business or commercial disputes? That is the lack of trust. You know. If I am a arbitrator, arbitrating a case between a company in Maldives or and a company in let's say UK, both the parties haven't seen me, both the parties haven't seen each other, and yet they are bound by my decision. Why do they want to do that? That is their trust, and there is a lack of trust in those services because they haven't met me, they haven't met each other. they had to physically change their situation according to what the mediator or arbitrator decide that will again uh, that will again show up in our legal culture that our legal culture is generally not that supportive of odia or adr in general because you know lawyers somehow do persuade the clients to go to litigation because that's their own courts that is their playground that is what the lawyers have their faith in that's what they have trained to be in they have been trained to fight and win their cases win the cases for clients in those courts so we need to you know all all the that uh, perspective between lawyers as well and encourage them that adr and per se odr is an acceptable choice further again we come to operational challenges and one of the main challenge is the privacy privacy and confidentiality uh, as dr dimon mentioned that there is a written submissions in arbitration if you know those are supposed to be confidential you if in mediations we send something written to a mediation or uh, to our mediator over let's say email or the whatsapp or whatever the you know network of communication they choose if that if that got hacked what will we do what can the parties do what if the arbitrator or mediator in the spirit of choosing solution you know violate their privacy and confidentiality concerns for example if i am in a dispute with my best friend and i choose dr dimon as my mediator and you know i tell her dr dimon that you know what is my friend if that my friend comes to this 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 solution i may i might Agree to resolve the dispute. See, so that's a confidential thing. I didn't want her to tell them the same thing. But if Doctor Dimon thought 
that you know in order to get other party to agree just tell them what param has demanded so she tells them they agree that this could has been resolved but the privacy has been violated so it's a very big thing privacy and confidentiality when it comes in odia services because we cannot trust like for example in arbitrations uh, if an arbitral award is passed there is no public copy of it the arbitrator will write only two copies one copy will go to claimant one copy will go to respondent but in case of odr the arbitrator will draft an award they will send that award to you know one party they will send the other award to other party they have the copies they can duplicate it as much as they want the arbitrator has copy they can duplicate it as much as they want it's total you know again is some of the trust and the privacy for the availability of neutral you know you need uh, in the odr you will have to find a neutral whom you don't know whom you don't whom you haven't met as of now so availability of neutral is also a thing there's rtd legal processes you know how to get uh, rtd legal processes with outcome and enforcement you know how to get it enforced because uh, your arbitral awards mediation set, uh, uh, settlements are uh, what do we say stamped signed by mediators arbitrators so how will you get is is uh, is it nature for the e copies is that um, allowed in your jurisdiction or not so it's very uh, you know if there's a lack of regulations on that it needs to be considered further we come to suggestions uh, i am very well aware that we are running out of time so i'll just keep it very short so suggestions on how to overcome the challenges well there's interoperability it's that the adr platform should be designed in such a manner that it can be independently developed and its components can interact and cooperate with internal and external system as i mentioned if we take the zoom platforms it can work on any sort of you know network it can work on any PC, phone. So you know, the whole model should be interoperable. Then we come to scalability. Well, it's a very easy one. It can be scaled. Like if two parties want to come, two parties can come. If more parties want to join, more parties can join. It should be scalable. It shouldn't be you know just that. uh the platform is just for specific people in specific reason no it should be scalable to fit the needs of generations or different generation modularity uh it's a complex designs developed by odr platforms should produce modular solution that can form the building blocks for future innovation further we come to transparency platform should be designed to be transparent that's no um, rocket science it should be accountable to all its stakeholders they should be designed in such a manner that both the processes adopted and the outcomes arrived can be made available to end user further user centric platforms must be designed to keep the primary users at the center and ensure choices of access and answer ensure accountability among actors on the platform you know it should be um, centered towards the user you know so that they get most out of it accessibility and equality as i mentioned in user centric the user should be able to you know access it the platform should be designed to be affordable and users should have the ability to interact 
without needing a middleman you know without needing the constant support of it person a regular person should know how to access it and equality well every person should be able to understand it and every person should be able to access it uh, data empowerment data driven development these are all same points it's basically platform should be designing design to absorb data identify new behavioral part pattern and use cases and you know based on such patterns additional features and notifications should be made to odr platform in a simpler sense uh, you know the odr platform should you know while respecting privacy select the data and observe patterns in it in order to make it better you know if something is not working there should always be evolution of it then we come to privacy security and trust by design well the platform should take adequate safeguards to protect the privacy of its users and security and integrity of data sent as i mentioned above there should be resilience that's you know pretty much obvious that in case of any failures or in case of any uh, you know server delay or such you know it sh- we shouldn't just stop working on odia just because it's not working or just because it's not very what to say accessible now or widely available we should be resilient and we should you know keep focusing towards it because it will be the future fairness again with the equality it should be fair it should be very you know easy to use uh, again in fairness it should be made available in multiple languages so that um, you know everyone despite a literate or a illiterate or people in different jurisdiction everyone should be uh, should be able to access it portability well it should be portable to all devices it shouldn't be that you know it can only work on desktops or that it can only work on tablets or that it can only work on smartphones it should be as portable as possible so that most people can take benefit of it well that's it any question please I do have one uh, some more things to add uh, am i audible yes yes ma'am yeah uh, so uh, you know i i believe every one of you have uh, uh, received whatever our message was with respect to odia although we haven't discussed discussed the processes because we were asked to just to you know introduce uh, the audience with the odia uh, platform so um, you know i was just uh, penning them down at when sir uh, was talking about it so what overall i have observed what are the requirements you know we need to uh, you know promote the literacy among the masses you know with respect to odia that we are having certain systems first of all as sir has said that people are not even aware of adr mechanisms and how that how can they can uh, you know talk about the technology so we need to uh, first of all promote the literacy among the masses uh, on odia and then next thing i have noted that uh, we have discussed that there are there are different category of people some people can afford it as sir has also talked about affordability so some people can afford it and some can not afford it so uh, there must be certain guidelines or certain principles to provide those aids to these masses who are not able to uh, you know access these odia platforms and then third thing i had noted was that uh, of development in technology because if you see uh, around the globe itself uh, whenever we talk about the underdeveloped countries and developing countries as well so we find that there is a lack of development in technology so uh, that is also a requirement around the globe and then uh, we need to keep the process really simple so because uh, as we have said that there are different category of people around the globe so the process is required to be really simple and whenever we are uh, you know promoting the literacy of odr we are also required to provide the processes which are simpler and which the people or masses can understand easily and lastly i have talked about i i have written about the uniform guidelines that should be established throughout the globe because it is not only 
uh, we in India sitting or uh, getting our disputes resolved, or you in Maldives, or in any nation, because we are we are now having uh, inter-country relations, isn't it? So definitely disputes may arise. So wherever people are, disputes are. So whenever we are having transactions in outside world, so we are, there is a possibility of different sort of disputes. So I believe that there must be a uniform guideline or there must be certain uniform thing which can be provided to uh, around the globe, which can be helpful in promoting OBR and legal health as well. So that's all from my side. If any other person has any submission, the floor is open. Please, anyone? I think there are no questions. <laughs> so we have we have resolved all their issues, isn't it? <laughs> That's great. So uh, there's this question. Yes. Any recent incidents on the breach of confidentiality ODR? Uh Dawood, uh, ma'am, do you want to take this? No, please, please take it. Well, uh, my view on this that no arbitrator or mediator board you know, intentionally cause breach of confidentiality of ODR. You know, no one want to end their career just for the sake of it. But uh, there can be cases where there's a cyber attack, there's a hack, which might lead to breach of confidentiality. So, uh, you know, in the cases of hack, uh, well, more generic in nature, so we don't uh, necessarily have an idea that, uh, you know, there's a breach of confidentiality or not, but it's a very digital, um, since it's a digital board, uh, it's a risk that is always there. Ma'am, do you have anything to add? Yeah, you have, you have given a very uh, apt solution to this problem.